Apathy as a coping strategy. Is it a good thing? Is it healthy? Is it helpful? Does it move you forward? And I think that more and more individuals are embracing this idea that apathy is an adaptive coping strategy. And what that does is in actuality is that embracing the idea of apathy, not caring. I just don't care what happens. I don't care about myself. I don't care about others. And sometimes apathy adds to or is through this lens, this BPD lens, which is something I call with that's that distorted view that our personality for those along the BPD borderline personality disorder spectrum, they see things in a distorted way. They see things that are sometimes neutral and there's research to support this that are neutral as threatening. So it's that distorted view and apathy as that coping strategy saying that, well, I'm just not going to care. I'm just not going to care about anything. That's really hard to do particularly because we are emotional beings. As human beings, we are emotional. We have emotions attached to different scenarios. Now, people will sometimes try to ascribe to this idea of apathy as a coping strategy. And they're not successful, which increases depression, anxiety, stress reactions, anger, frustration, other types of factors. Or it also increases substance abuse, drug abuse, and other types of issues as well. So, Apathy as a coping strategy isn't great. Now, let me tell you three components about apathy as a coping strategy. First, it's this idea of emotional detachment, that if I could be separate from people who hurt me, from situations that I really get intensely emotionally invested in, then I won't care. And if I don't care, then I won't care about the outcome. But here's the problem, is that if you do that, it affects your motivation your degree of participation in that endeavor, in that relationship, in that task that you want to complete. Because if you kind of subscribe to this, I don't give a beep, what happens is, is that then, I mean, if it works out, it works out. There's no intrinsic motivation. Now in therapy, because therapy is really hard, particularly if you're going to deal with a personality disorder or long-term prolonged maladaptive habits, right? It could be anger, it could be acting out, it could be promiscuity, it could be a whole host of things. But if you don't care about the outcome, then you have no intrinsic motivation. In therapy, I'm always tapping into my client's intrinsic motivation to move them forward. And if they tell me, well, I just want to emotionally detach. I'm just not going to care. I'm going to be completely separate. What I find is that their motivation to move forward dwindles and separates as well. And that's a huge component of apathy as a coping strategy. Now, the other is that it's avoidance of emotional pain. Here's what happens. When we try to avoid emotional pain, right? As human beings, we're going to experience it. It's part of life. And some individuals have experienced intense emotional pain. There is no doubt about it. But here's the thing. The more that we try to avoid it, the more it comes back. I like to think of it as throwing a racquetball, right, against a wall. The harder you chuck it, the harder it comes back. But if we're like, well, I'm just going to avoid it. I'm going to chuck the racquetball and then I'm just going to be, I'm going to avoid it. Eventually, it's going to pelt you in the head. Eventually, it's going to come back and hit you. Or what's going to happen is it's going to go somewhere and you're not going to be able to find it and it's going to be lost. It's the same thing for your emotions, those emotional connections. Is that emotional pain for a lot of individuals sits in the background and it festers and it breathes and it breeds negative self-talk, self-hate, self-doubt, self-contempt, all of these things. And those things go back to that BPD lens influences how you see yourself and how you see others. And then it starts to distort how you live your life. It starts to bleed into how you live your life. The degree of success that you can manifest from the relationships you have, from the tasks that you get involved in, from the goals that you want to achieve. So the avoidance of that emotional pain only really puts a light stopper, like a cork in a bottle, right? But in that bottle is all this pressure that keeps building up from the other side. But you don't see it because you want to avoid the emotional pain. So the pressure keeps building and building and building. And eventually, 
that cork's going to pop out and all of these emotions are going to hit you. And how you deal with that, when people get overwhelmed, they go to their old habits, whether they're maladaptive or adaptive, healthy or unhealthy. So we got to be aware of that. That is another consequence of apathy as a coping strategy. And the last, it's the belief that it is a simplification of decision making. That if I can remove my emotions, it'll be easier for me to make difficult decisions. Well, again, I get, we got to challenge that because if you look at those various situations and you look at those difficult decisions, that the emotions, even though sometimes they can create a degree of distortion, again, it gives us the energy to process those situations, to try to manage those situations. And when we try to simplify difficult decisions or difficult situations, that oversimplification, we miss stuff. We lose stuff. And when we lose stuff and miss stuff, sometimes, just like that racquetball, if we're not paying attention, comes back and it hits us in the head. And we do not want that. No, 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 no. So what we want to do is the simplification of your decisions. What we want to do is we want to put your emotions in it, but you want to be able to control those emotions, manage those emotions. So when you feel yourself activated, you feel yourself that you've been triggered or you've hit an emotional button, and I'll put a link for a video that I did right here on that so you can better understand those two concepts, and that's really important. Then you realize what you need to do to manage those situations. Was it a trigger? Was it an emotional button? Are you overwhelmed with your emotions, memories, thoughts, and feelings, which distorts how you solve those situations? What happens is when you're activated, what sometimes what you need to do is assess that emotional intensity. Put it on a scale, zero to 10. Where is it? And if it's over six, set your own level, over six, you need to take a break. Not a break for a week or two weeks. Go for a walk for a minute, pet your dog, right? Hang out with your bird, whatever you're doing. But give yourself a second because allow that emotion to decrease and that will empower you with clarity. And it goes back to that clarity of understanding the situation and managing your emotions. Apathy is not an adaptive coping strategy. It's a maladaptive coping strategy that creates more problems. Emotional detachment is an absolute negative. Avoidance of emotional pain, all you're doing is just adding pressure and problems. Simplification of decision making, challenging to simplify difficult decisions and situations and trying to remove emotions doesn't make it easier. Managing emotions makes it easier. Recognition of those emotions make it easier and you can absolutely do that. Take the steps you need to do things differently. Recognize your emotions. Process your emotions. On my, my website I have a free worksheet that is an emotions exercise. And it lists all these different emotions because sometimes people, all they know is happy, sad, mad, glad, bored, or shy, whatever it is. There's all these other emotions. And the more options you have, it can sound like it's overwhelming, but we all have our go-to emotions. Go and check that out. Go to my website, check out the worksheet. And that worksheet can help you understand your emotions, what your go-tos are. And when you feel that go-to, your negatives, positives, emotions are emotions. There's really no, there's really no balance whether they're negative or positive emotions because sometimes anger can activate us to do things in a positive way. Like when I get frustrated, then I start taking a step back and think, wait a minute, what am I frustrated about? Hold on a minute. And I kind of process what's frustrated me, right? But other situations is that even if I'm happy and overwhelmed and a little giddy and being silly, that if I get too silly, I got to kind of rein that in because sometimes I'm too silly and I don't want to be too silly, right? So we got to dial that back or make sure it's appropriate to that situation. So we have to manage those emotions. Apathy is going to add to your problems and that's not what you want to do. Do things differently. Recognize your emotions. Manage your emotions. And you'll see that you have better control over yourself, your life, and the situations that you're in. So I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.